Hello everybody and welcome to uh, Allie and Coco Science Show. Now last year I did a very Coco Christmas, which was 25 days of wintry and holiday themed videos that were science related. It was super fun and I loved doing it, but this year I just had so much going on. Where are you going? You're just gonna shove your butt in my face. Today I wanted to get in the holiday spirit uh, because 2020 has been a year. Today, I wanted to make my favorite holiday beverage, the peppermint mocha. Yes, last year in a very cocoa Christmas, I did do a peppermint hot chocolate video. I think I actually did two. I'm a, a little obsessed. So today, I wanted to just do an in-depth and better dive into how to make the perfect peppermint mocha. This is a Starbucks copycat. Um, I have not had a, a peppermint mocha. Holy cannoli, the sunset. So yes, I haven't had a peppermint mocha this season and I need one. And I gotta show you A, the sunset, and B, my peppermint plant. Let's go. First off, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And here is my peppermint plant. It's growing a little out of control and uh, there's some oregano that the seeds fell in my children. So today we are going to be doing a Starbucks copycat recipe of a peppermint mocha using plants. Let's get cooking. Okay, so first we're going to make the mocha sauce and I'm using a recipe from Lydia's Flexitarian Kitchen and of course I'm going to leave a link in the description so you guys can use the same recipe if you'd like to. And for this you're going to need one and a half cups of water, one and a half cups of granulated sugar, three-fourths cup cocoa powder, yes, you. Fourth cup of instant coffee, a tablespoon of vanilla, and a dash of salt. So you're just going to mix all of this into a saucepan until it's all dissolved and a syrupy consistency. So ignore the amount of mess I just made trying to get this going. Uh, we're professionals here, oh, obviously. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit first off about my favorite plant of all time, especially for eating. It's Theobroma cacao. Any guesses of what that is? No, it's a plant. It's the cacao tree, like uh, like chocolate, where cocoa beans come from. Yeah, like you. So, let's talk a little bit about chocolate. And I know I've talked about it in a few videos. I'm a little obsessed. You are so cute. So the cacao plant is native to South America and what is today the Amazon? and uh, humans have been enjoying it for at least 4,000 years. Not only is it a South American plant, but it was used in Central America, as well as what is today Mexico, so North America. Research shows the cacao plant was actually domesticated over 5,000 years ago in what is today Ecuador. The Aztec people believed that the cacao seeds were sacred. It was sometimes used as currency, and uh, it was a gift from the god Quetzalcoatl. Yes, that is a species of bird. You are very astute. Theobroma, the genus name, means food of the gods. You are so cute. It's in the Malvaceae family, uh, which has some of our faves. If you like okra, if you like baobabs, these are all in Malvaceae. That is the mallow family. Exactly, Colette. Like marshmallows. Ooh. And she's out. Professionals. We'll save marshmallows for another video. But just know marshmallows and the cacao plant are both in the same family, Malvaceae. Okay, so now we're gonna touch a little bit on the states of matter. If you need a refresher, I did a video a few weeks ago, so I'll leave a link in the description for that. But what we're doing, we have our liquidy chocolate and we are adding energy in the form of heat, and you can see some of that liquid evaporating in the form of gas right here. And as we take out more liquid, as we evaporate more of the liquid, we actually get a thicker, more syrupy liquid. So we go from something with a lower viscosity that can kind of move very quickly like water, to a syrup with a high viscosity. Ooh, let me taste it. I'm so excited. So once you've kind of gotten that to a thick syrup, you can put that chocolate to the side. 
I'm gonna put mine in this jar and just let it hang out on the countertop. Okay, chocolate syrup, check. Now we gotta make our peppermint simple syrup. And just like the name suggests, it's not that hard of a recipe once you get the hang of it. All you need are equal parts water, sugar, and peppermint leaves. I am doing a cup of each because I'm gonna use this peppermint syrup for other things, but you can do a half cup of each, a third cup, whatever you wanna do. Go ahead and start by just dissolving that sugar into the water on medium heat. And once you've got it almost all the way done, go ahead and throw in those peppermint leaves as well. You're just gonna let those leaves simmer for a few minutes before you take it off the heat. So peppermint is in the mint family, Lamiaceae, and its scientific name is Mentha pepperida. That X indicates that this is a hybrid species. This is actually a naturally occurring hybrid species and is a cross between spearmint and watermint. So it is naturally occurring, but it is also sterile. Peppermint does not create its own uh, seeds. Instead, they spread by underground rhizomes and runners. So the roots just go horizontally under the earth and they sprout up new greenery. So once it's simmered for a while, you're gonna wanna take it off the heat and just let it sit. While we're waiting, let's talk a little plant chemistry. So many members of the mint family create super awesome anti-herbivory compounds and oils. So these chemicals, if you were an herbivore, you take a bite, it's not happening. It tastes gross, it smells gross. You don't wanna touch anymore. Protects the plant's leaves. However, these same oils are why we humans have been loving the mints for thousands of years uh, in our cooking, cleaning, medicinal purposes. Sometimes these plants have a lot of cultural significance. Some other famous members of the mint family include rosemary, basil, lemon balm, oregano, thyme, sage, so many delicious plants. Peppermint and spearmint were actually planted along the footpaths in ancient Rome because, get this, when your robes, when your clothing sweeps over the peppermint and the spearmint plant, that plant gets disturbed and it'll create more of these oils that smell good and refreshing to us. The idea was when your clothes swept over those plants and they release that smell, that smelly smell that smells smelly, you could actually keep evil away. So what compounds are in peppermint? Menthol and menthone will give peppermint its cool minty flavor. There's a protein in our mouth called TRPM8 and that interacts with these compounds and that's what makes our mouths feel super icy. Think like after you brush your teeth and you drink some water. Ooh. But these two compounds are in spearmint too. So what sets peppermint apart from spearmint? Well, that's just with a little help from our friend menthol acetate, come on down, and pelagon. Um, <laughs> these two compounds give peppermint the characteristic peppermint taste smell. And plants will use these compounds to keep away herbivores and protect the leaf in any way. So if there's any sort of disturbance, biting and chewing, rubbing, any sense of danger, the leaves will actually produce more of these oils and release more of these oils through these hair-like cells called glandular trichomes. Another form of disturbance might be throwing those broken up leaves into a boiling pot of sugary water. So what we're doing is we are releasing these oils, these compounds, and we're integrating it into our sugar mixture. We don't want the leaves in our syrup, so we're about to filter those out. But what we have done is gotten that pulagon, that menthol acetate, menthone, menthol, and we've infused it into our syrup. So now, rather than just having a simple syrup, we have a peppermint simple syrup. Now all that's left to do is assemble the drink. Uh, of course, if you don't drink coffee, you can do this to hot chocolate or tea. It'll be no matter what. So just kind of make it your own, but I will be putting the recipe that I used in the description down below. So you're gonna add two tablespoons of mocha sauce, one tablespoon of peppermint syrup, three ounces of strong coffee since I don't have espresso, and eight ounces of steamed milk. Since I don't have a milk steamer, what I did was I frothed the milk on the stove and I ended up just adding the mocha sauce and the peppermint syrup into the milk and just heated it all up together. Personal preference, but I think the way that Starbucks would do it is they put it right in the cup. And of course, we are big fans of whipped cream in this house, so I had to add whipped cream. And here we go. A Starbucks copycat peppermint mocha at home using plants, using botany. Now, 
a taste test. Ooh. It's like the perfect wintry flavor, just the right amount of chocolate, not too sweet. So it's like a less sweet version of Starbucks, which I prefer. So guys, we perfected the peppermint mocha using botany, plant chemistry, awesome science. So I hope you guys had some fun, learned something along the way. And if you wanna try this at home, I highly recommend you do it. Go ahead and try using plants if you can. Um, but I had a super fun time and it's super delicious. So for the question of the week, I gotta know, what is your favorite flavor or food? from this season. I love how it has such a strong tie to culture and what foods in history were in season during this period. Uh, I personally love peppermint, cranberries like on our tree here, and dark chocolate and latkes. Oh, just root vegetables of any kind are always delicious. Uh, so go ahead, comment down below. What is your favorite food during this season? Yeah. Ah, you love turkey, 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 turkey. Um, so go ahead, comment down below. What is your favorite flavor or food from this season? And go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new or you just like begging puppies. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, happy new year. And I will see you again soon. Bye. Let's get cooking. Ouch. I can still do a back roll over. I'm so excited. Okay, bye.